Good morning, everyone. I'm 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 what's between you and lunch, so I'll keep this as focused and uh, and I hope as interesting as possible. Um, everywhere, everyone, mobile connectivity. What what does that mean? Um, well, before we get into that, let me uh, let me let me summarise what we found out about uh, the state of mobile disconnectivity in New Zealand. If I can get the clicker to work. Oh, this one, is it? Okay. So, we commissioned a survey of uh, 500 farmers, boaties, and hunter-hikers in New Zealand. And these are some of the highlights from the report that, that came out of that. On average, 43% of farmland in New Zealand has zero mobile coverage. And that mobile coverage issues are experienced by 91% of hunter-hikers, 62% of boaties and fishermen that are offshore at sea, 77% of boaties on lakes and waterways, and 71% of farmers. And nearly a third of those reported that their safety was compromised in the past due to inconsistent mobile coverage. And we've heard this morning how important safety in farming is. And, uh, and, and Karen and Fiona from the previous panel, I hope what I had to say is, uh, is going to be helpful. Um, finally, on that point on this slide, reliable mobile coverage is very important and, and, and important uh, because of safety, emergency and security for 81% of respondents, peace of mind for 78%, and workplace communications also came in there as well. So there are many situations or scenarios or activities in this country uh, and amongst many countries of course where mobile disconnectivity occurs and I'm, I'd actually like to ask the audience in, in the past 12 months who here in the audience outside of the cities and suburbs has had an experience with their mobile phone disconnecting from the network or no no mobile coverage. Could you just raise your hand? Okay, so that's that's pretty much vast majority of people here. Um, we have heard this morning that uh, that roughly fifty percent of New Zealand has no mobile coverage. That number will will come down with the, the government programs that are occurring. Um, but it will remain still still significant on a, on a geographic basis. Um, so my proposition is, wouldn't it be great if the phone that you have in your pocket today, that you have in your hand today, if this phone would work everywhere? So literally everywhere. Okay, so let me introduce you the world's first mobile tower in space. And we launched this uh, back in February this year. It was a two-week, just over a two-week mission. We had test licenses in nine countries, including New Zealand. And we demonstrated that connectivity from, from satellite to unmodified mobile phones using the standard radio frequencies that are already present in the phones that you have. We established that the link margin that we expected on paper, we, we established that with the 1 dB. Um, and we have a second launch which is our payload 2.0 coming up in, uh, in a matter of a few weeks, launching on SpaceX for another round of further testing and expansion of this technology. Uh, so what is this going to result in? What is this going to mean for, uh, for, for you and for, for everyone who uses the mobile phone? Um, so today, the picture of satellite communications to use satellite communications one needs to buy either a satellite phone or a satellite terminal i'm talking about portable satellite communications um, the number worldwide uh, that are using satellite communications this way is very low it's it's somewhere in the range of five million um, compared to uh, between seven and eight billion users of mobile phones and our proposition is that, again, this same phone, unmodified, no change to the hardware, no change to the software, will work beyond the existing terrestrial coverage that 
you have today uh, that you that you use every day. So it's effectively a, a seamless extension. When you go to rural and remote areas, is where this will have will have the most value. So as you get out of range, you have an opportunity for your phone to take the signal from the satellites that we're going that we're going to build. Oops. Okay. So, so how how and why is this possible? What's what what's happened? I mean, this idea has been thought of before. As we have heard, uh, it's been touched on this morning as well, the space industry is undergoing a, a, a huge disruption right now. And part of that disruption is to do with the access to space. So it's now becoming much less costly and more frequently to, to reach space with companies like, like Rocket Labs in New Zealand and, and SpaceX. The satellites themselves are becoming smaller. They're cheaper to build. They're faster to build. And what we're going to do is we're going to use them to form a constellation, which you can see in the, in the graphic there, to provide 24 by 7 coverage of the globe, excluding the North and South Pole. If anyone's got a business case for the North and South Pole, come and talk to us. We'll also include that as well. This will essentially mean connectivity everywhere. Everywhere where your phone can see the sky. Uh, so it's not designed for the basin of a building in central Auckland but it's designed for the rural and remote areas. What else does this mean? Well, we've, we've heard it this morning. It has a big impact on safety. We aim to take the search out of search and rescue. So if you're lost at sea, if you're broken down on a remote road, if you're injured on the mountain while, while tramping, if you have an accident while farming, you will be able to use your mobile phone to uh, request assistance, to give you a location, to help a, uh, a, a, the emergency services understand what your situation is and what type of help you need. And then the other big impact of this is in terms of disasters. So when a disaster happens, one thing that often occurs is that the mobile network infrastructure is damaged or even sometimes wiped out. And so there are three areas where, where we believe that we can uh, pr have, a, have a role to, to play. Firstly, uh, in the pre and post disaster scenario, we will be able to provide uh, broadcast SMSs to all phone users. So in the pre scenario, pre disaster scenario, that's for, for users that are off the mobile phone off the terrestrial mobile phone network. And then post, if there is no terrestrial phone network after the disaster, we will be able to, to, to reach all, all subscribers and let them know what has happened, what they should do. And also then the other part of this is to allow them a chance to respond, to request for help, uh, and also to say where they are and, and what kind of help they may need. And then the final piece is to support emergency services isn't coming in with the response to a disaster. So to help them coordinate their response with, with communications. <laughs>